Praise the Lord, for this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad because of Jesus. Now, it is a choice that you and I make, whether we want to be glad or we want to be sad and uh, disappointed, discouraged. It is a choice that you and I can make and will make to be happy because of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. So make sure that you remain happy and rejoicing today. Uh, today I want to read a passage from the book of Acts chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. I just want to read it. Listen to this. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and he kept back part of the proceeds his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now, it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much? She said, Yes, for so much. And when Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Now this episode, I am sure all of you who are Christian Bible reading people of God are very familiar with. And so this episode shows the interior life of the earlier church. You know, how to early a church can be but it actually not. And so we need to be very, very careful how our church will look to the world. And also, more importantly, how the Lord will look and see how he sees our church. And only he knows the interior of the church. The world will look and see the outward church. Now, consider the sin. Was not that uh, they, did the, what was the sin? The sin was not that they uh, took a part of the money for themselves. But while bringing half, they pretended to have brought the whole uh, the whole amount. And what is this sin called? Hypocrisy. They were liars. You know, Jesus considered hypocrisy as one of the greatest sin that he could not stand. And that was his problem with the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious leaders. They were the greatest hypocrites. This outwardly they were one thing, but inwardly they were something else, just the opposite. So there was a lot of pretension 
outward pretension and this was the sin the sin was not bringing only half the sin was lying about it pretending that they were built bringing the whole thing and then actually bringing only half that is hypocrisy jesus hates hypocrisy and let me emphasize it again and again you will find uh, jesus christ in dispute with these leaders what was the main problem he even told his disciples they sit in moses judgment seat so i tell you you do what they are teaching but do not follow them what they do because they do not do what they teach and that is religious hypocrisy and my friends the important thing that you and i must realize is that what we do not see or we think that nobody has seen jesus has already seen it and he not only sees that he also knows the intentions of uh, our heart jesus hates hypocrisy you know this is one of the one of the strategies of the devil to destroy the church you know satan try to destroy the church through uh, three in uh, in in different ways first he tries to destroy the church by external pressures like persecution and as we read in the book of acts but you know persecution will never destroy the church persecution will never weaken the church persecution will never never cause the church to be ineffective and the devil knew it and so the second strategy the devil uses it by internal pressures which is more subtle and dangerous there are two manifestations to it number one hypocrisy of those who profess but do not practice profession is not what god looks at god looks at what you practice whether I, i preach it is not my preaching it is what i practice whether i am practicing my preaching that is important and in your own life remember it is not what you profess what you testify but whether you are actually living according to what you profess so hypocrisy of those who profess but do not practice it that can be a dangerous damaging thing inside the church and the second thing is the devil uses the stubbornness of those who sin but do not repent see what is the sin actually anyone can make mistake but the problem is if you do not learn from your mistake then that is a greater mistake the sin the greater sin is not what you have done but the greater sin is not admitting it and repenting of it see like david he committed adultery that was a terrible sin and is a terrible sin even today and not only adultery any other sin you know that is not the greater sin the greater sin is you do not not only admit it but you never repent of it so my friends that kind of a people inside the church can cause the church 
to be damaged and ineffective. That can destroy the church. First, the hypocrisy can destroy, and secondly, the internal pressures like uh, persecution, but the persecution, I guarantee, will not destroy the church. What destroys the church is hypocrisy inside the church. Stubbornness. Stubbornness is, I committed a mistake, but I am so stubborn, I not only really refuse to admit it, but then there is no repentance as well. And so this kind of things will become like cancer inside the church. So I urge God's people, let us be very careful how we live and what we do. We profess, but what our profession must be in practice. That is important. So I pray today that the Holy Spirit will help all of us and particularly you, my friend, to live a godly life, a life in which God is pleased. And may the Holy Spirit help you. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you that you are given to us by God the Father through our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ, that you may be with us, with your church, with your people, and lead us and guide us and teach us and strengthen us and show us where we go, when we go wrong and enable us to repent. So may we live a life that is yielded to the Holy Spirit and his ministry to us and be humble. Thank you for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. God's blessing be upon you today. This is a great day. Live victoriously. Amen.